Okay, what I'm going to do today is do a review on Act Two of Julius Caesar, so you can prepare for your quiz over this. Um, let's start, of course, with scene one. In scene one, Brutus is pacing back and forth in his garden, sometimes they call it an orchard, and he is just beside himself because he just doesn't know what to do about um, Julius Caesar, and he's been reading those letters that Cassius wrote that he forged that are not legitimate letters and had sent a place where Brutus would get them. So he has been um, reading these and pondering them, and in the letters, these citizens, who again, really didn't write these, are urging him to do something they're looking to him for leadership, for guidance, to do something to stop Caesar from becoming king or a tyrant. And after he keeps thinking about this and reading these letters, he comes to the conclusion that for the good of Rome, he has to make sure that Caesar is killed, that there's no other way, and it is just for the good of Rome. Okay. A little later, a servant comes in and says, you have visitors waiting for you, and uh, he lets them come in, and this is a whole group of people who are planning this assassination on, of Caesar. And we, we just call them the conspirators. You don't have to be able to name who was in the group. I mean, we know Cassius was there, and Brutus, obviously, it's his home. And, but just call them the conspirators. Those are the people who visited Brutus that night. They talk about their plans. They explain that someone needs to get Mark Anthony away from Caesar at the time of the assassination because Mark Anthony will try to protect him. And of course they plan to do this assassination in the Capitol at this, when the Senate meets. So someone takes that job of getting uh, Anthony away from Caesar. And then Cassius goes further and says, I think, you know, we need to kill Mark Anthony too because he is going to be dangerous. If we kill Caesar, he's going to want revenge. But Brutus just doesn't think that Anthony has it in him to be dangerous. You know, he says, once Caesar's gone, Anthony will be no problem. And uh, also, we don't want to look like a gang of murderers and thugs. What we are there doing is getting rid of someone who's going to take over Rome and be a tyrant. We're doing, this is a political act, not an act of a bunch of murderers and criminals. And if we kill more than just Caesar, we're going to look really bad. And so Cassius goes along with Brutus's feelings on that and they decide not to kill Mark Anthony. Um, okay. They make their agreements. One, one person suggests that they all swear an oath, but again, Brutus feels that they're all honest men. They have a just cause, and they don't really need to swear. They've agreed, and that's enough. So the conspirators leave, and after that, uh, Brutus is still kind of worried and thinking about this and very pensive, and his wife Portia comes out and says to him that, he hasn't been eating well or sleeping well. There's obviously something bothering him, and he claims that he's just ill. And she knows he's not just ill. She knows her husband, and she also knows that, that if he were ill, he wouldn't be out in the night air because uh, in those days they felt that night air was unhealthy for people. She gets somewhat angry with him because he will not be honest with her and tell her what's going on. He will not trust her with this information. Well, eventually he decides he will tell her, but when the scene ends, they go off the set, and we know that he does tell her, but we, it's not actually written, their whole conversation is not actually written in the play where he tells her. We just know that he does. Okay, the next scene uh, is the next day, and it's in Caesar's home. His wife, Calpurnia, has been having nightmares all night, you know, screeching out that they're going to kill Caesar and this and that. And uh, it's kind of upset Caesar. 
Calpurnia says she had a dream, and her dream was that she saw a statue of Caesar with blood just spurting out of it, and that there were Roman citizens standing around and like bathing their hands in Caesar's blood and smiling. And she sees that as a warning that something awful is going to happen to Caesar, that some Romans are going to kill him. And he becomes quite upset about it. So he sends out uh, augurs to sacrifice an animal to see if the omens are good or not. And when they come back, they have bad news because when they sacrificed this animal, it didn't have a heart, which is obviously unnatural and means something bad is going to happen. So he's pretty much convinced he's not going to go to the Senate that day. And then Decius comes in, and Decius's job is to get Caesar to the Senate that day so that they can kill him. Um, Caesar says that his wife doesn't want him to go. He relates the whole thing about the dream, and Decius is desperate to get him there. So first he reinterprets the dream, and he says that what the dream really means is that Caesar is going to give new lifeblood to Rome that through his own strength and that Rome is going to be even greater than it ever was at, with Caesar as its king. Um, he goes on to say to Caesar, you know, the Senate is going to give you a crown today and if you don't show up, they may change their mind. And then a third thing he says is, do you really want people to think that you are persuaded by a woman or by fear? And so at this point, Caesar decides, you know, I, I really need to go. And he uh, says the lines about cowards die many times before their deaths. And he is talking about the fact that if you are brave, you know that someday you will die. But it only happens once, and there's nothing to be done about it, where cowards are constantly afraid, constantly thinking about their deaths as if it's happening all the time. So he, he claims to be brave, and he's not going to worry about death, because it will come when it comes. Okay, so they get ready to leave the, for the Senate. In the next scene, we're, we are on the road uh, that Caesar's going to travel through in order to get to the Senate. And there are two people waiting there to warn him. One is Artemidorus, who has a letter that actually states who the conspirators are and warns Caesar about them. You know, beware of these people. And he names them. The second person who's waiting there to warn him is the soothsayer who continuously tries to tell him, beware the Ides of March. And here it is, this is March 15th. This is the Ides of March. So these two people are waiting to warn Caesar. Meanwhile, Portia, who knows what's going to happen, comes also to the spot and is trying to figure out what has happened. Has Caesar gone yet or uh, because she's very, very concerned about her husband. Okay, at this point, uh, we don't, Caesar has not yet come into the picture. That will happen in Act 3. So hopefully this review will have helped you get ready for the quiz over Act 2.